Yes, I do know a lot about type matchups. I'll admit, though, I do occasionally forget something now and again. Okay, the next trainer is Swimmer Clayton. And it looks like we're going to have to deal with set damage moves this time around. Moving on to the next skill test. Ah, soak it up. Initiate Acid Armor and Barrier Plan. So yeah, we got another random set of Pokémon here. Let's see what moves they have. Pidgeot has Wing Attack. Dragonair has Dragon Rage. Pinsir has Seismic Toss. Corsola has Rock Slide. Hitmonlee has Rolling Kick. And Murkrow has Nightshade. So, because he said about increasing his defense, we're gonna start with... let me see here... We'll start with Murkrow, Pinsir, and then Dragonair. I'm gonna start with Murkrow, though, is my first one. Uh, but those are the three that have set damage moves, and that's uh, the theme of this battle. Since he's gonna increase his defense a lot, you're best using a set damage move, because a set damage move will do that much damage, no matter what. Tweet. Operation... what was that again? I missed that last word. And yes, I know the joke about the muck. You don't have to point it out to me. That joke has been really overused. Even recently, I've seen so many memes with that joke. With muck. It's definitely one of those memes that's been overused, though, no question about it. And that's why I'm sad about it. So yeah, you don't have to let me know about it, because I already know. And we're using Nightshade, even though it used Acid Armor. As you can see, it's still doing the same amount of damage, even though it increased its defense. So two more Nightshades will take it out. Defense went way up. I never understood this, though. Um, moves like Acid Armor and Agility always say uh, a certain stack goes way up, but then other moves say uh, they um, greatly increase or sharply increase. I never understood what the difference was between like sharply increasing and then went way up. I never understood like why it gave a different message. Oh, and it poisoned me. That shouldn't be a big deal, though. And it uses a weaker variation, Grimer. Again, using Nightshade. And we go first this time, because we outspeed Grimer. Yeah, you do that. It ain't gonna help you here. Okay, moving on with another Nightshade. And slowly losing health from Poison. I think that was just standard Poison, I don't think that was toxic. If it was toxic, it would double each time it poisoned me. I didn't explain that right. Basically, there's two types of Poisons. Uh, poison and then Badly Poison. Poison just whittles your HP over time, after your turn is over, and it'll eventually uh, take all the HP away from you. Badly Poisoned comes from a Pokemon that used Toxic on you, and when you're Badly Poisoned, the amount of damage you take from that particular type of Poison will double over each turn, so if it takes away 8, eight HP the first turn, it'll take away 16 on the next turn, and then it'll take away 32, and then 64, and so on. It's basically set up where you'll faint in a set number of turns, uh, is what the badly poison is. So basically you'll faint quicker after you've been badly poisoned as opposed to being just poisoned in general. So yeah, if, you're, if you've been hit by toxic, that's not good. And it doesn't look like toxic poison. And Cloyster, you just keep increasing your defense with barrier because it's not going to work. Murkrow might be able to take out the third Pokemon as well. We'll have to see here. 
Yeah, because uh, one more uh, nightshade will take it out for good. Oh no, it's going to use Surf. So I'll be forced to use yet another Pokemon. No big deal though, because we have two good choices. You did a good job, Murkrow. Thank you. And we have Pinsir and Dragonair. We'll use Dragonair. I do like Dragonair a lot. I'm almost tempted to say I like Dragonair better than Dragonite, even. I do like Dragonite a lot, though, too, but, uh, what's neat about Dragonair is, um, just the variety. Well, Dragonite's the same way, too, but Dragonair can learn, like, a variety of different moves. Because it does have a fairly good special attack. And Dragon Rage will do 40 damage as well, no matter what. And Cloyster is down. Glub, glub, glub. There's no water in the room. Idiot. <laughs> yeah, he's a weirdo. They're all weirdos, really, if you think about it. So yeah, for that battle, you need Murkrow, Pinsir, and Dragonair, because they have set damage moves. Yes, there is such a thing, because I just showed you. It doesn't matter how high you raise your defense if your opponent uses set damage moves. Glub. Exactly. Alrighty, moving on to the next trainer here, Youngster Jonathan. Uh, he's going to use Solar Beam and Skull Bash, as indicated by his message there. So we're going to have to find ways to avoid uh, getting damaged by those moves. Bang, 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 try Blast of Solar Beam. Oh, he has Grass and Fire types. So, I'll have to think hard about which one to use here to start with. Um, we can look at the moves here quick. Uh, Crokinaw has Scratch and Dig. Seeking has Horn Attack. Aerodactyl has Scary Face and Fly. Dugtrio has Slash. Delibird has Frustration and Fly. And Raticate has Quick Attack. I'll take my chances and start with Delibird. And the other two Pokemon are Aerodactyl and Crokinaw because they have Fly and Dig, respectively. So yeah, if you couldn't figure it out, you have to use um, a move that'll basically correlate with them, where you can avoid taking damage from them while they're actually using the move, because Solar Beam and Skull Bash take two turns to charge up. And I picked the wrong one already. How typical. So let's use... Uh, well, wait a minute. Yeah, Crokinaw. We're going to use Crokinaw. For a second I thought I spoke too soon, but Crokinaw is the right one to use. Yeah, as you can tell, everything just has like a theme here. I wonder if I outspeed Houndoom. I don't know if I do or not. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and use Dig. Yes, I do outspeed it. So I timed that just right. Bang, bang, bang. It's going to miss me because I'm under the ground. You can still get hit while you're underground, but it, there's only a few moves that can even do that to you. Um, two of them I can think of off the top of my head are Earthquake and Fissure. And Magnitude's another one, too. I did forget about that. Uh, Earthquake and Magnitude will do double damage when you're underground, too, so you got to really watch out for that. And we are going to use another Dig, so that we can avoid the Solar Beam yet again, and damage Houndoom instead. So we burrow underground, avoid the Solar Beam, and then we'll plow right into him on our second turn. And yes, it is a boy. I did check and see. It does say male in the corner there. And just like that, we took out Houndoom. Uh, you want to avoid getting hit by Solar Beam because Crokinaw is weak to that move. Uh, it, it'll do a lot of damage to Crokinaw because it's a type of disadvantage. And it uses Executor. Okay, switching back to Delibird again. 
because Delibird is Ice and Flying, which is double defensive against Grass. I'm assuming it's going to use a Grass move anyway. And I know for sure that Delibird outspeeds Executor, there's no question about that. Okay, yeah, it's going to use Solar Beam. That's not a big deal. We can use Fly. Delibird flew up high. I'll go ahead and say this. I definitely uh, love the Pokemon Delibird. I love the way it looks. I just wish its stats were just a bit better. Uh, it's kind of it's. It actually is a. It's a fair Pokemon. Um, I almost said so-so, but that's not right. It's Delibird's average. It doesn't have the best stats, but it doesn't have the worst stats either. But I definitely wish they would have given it um, better stats. As you can see, 105 HP for a level 50 Delibird. Although, that's a little weird, because I remember the rental for uh, the other cups, the Poke Cup, and even some of the other modes. For the level 50 Delibird, it had more HP than 105. I think it actually has 130. Although, that's just a variance of uh, um, IVs and those hidden mechanics behind the stats. Generation 3 is when natures were introduced so that you could understand how to uh, affect those stats. And his last Pokemon is Venusaur. I am very positive that I outspeed it, so I'll go ahead and fly. Or no, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, it's going to use Skull Bash. And its defense went up. I forgot that Skull Bash actually did that. I'll have to time this differently then. At least fly super effective. Charge! Wow, that, that was so powerful it knocked me out. That was bad timing though. I should have used Frustration first and then fly. But that's okay, because I still have Aerodactyl. And Croconaw, for that matter. Aerodactyl is a very fast Pokemon. Um, since it didn't charge up its movie yet, I'm going to use Scary Face first. Not that its speed matters in this case, because Aerodactyl is faster than Venusaur anyway. But I'm just doing it so that I can time the move right. Okay, now I'm going to want to use Fly so that I'll fly in the air as soon as it launches its Skull Bash move. As you've seen there, it missed. And Aerodactyl is going to use Fly. And it's super effective. Oh, it hung in just by a little bit. Curse you. We'll just have to use another Fly then. I do like Aerodactyl a lot. Um, of the fossil Pokemon, I definitely like it over uh, both uh, Omanyte and Kabuto for the first generation games. It was nice that they had uh, Aerodactyl available to uh, get as well through the old Am the old Amber, pardon me. I almost said that wrong. And just like that I took out Venusaur. But yeah, Aerodactyl's my favorite of the fossil Pokemon. Uh, my next favorite would probably be uh, Kabuto slash Kabutops. Kabutops is a very, very popular Pokemon. Um and by the way, for this battle, as a reminder, you need Delibird, Aerodactyl, and Croconaw. Because they have Fly and Dig, respectively. Alright, you could dodge an attack by using Fly or Dig. Yep, you can.